Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Written Undead podcast. It looks like I glitched in a little bit early on already. Thank you for all that. Looky here. I'm getting psychedelic. Everybody, it is a great pleasure that this week we finally get to have Damon Manx, or as it is, Damius Manximus on the show this week. We got to, we, you know, we got to have him on the uh, Padded Room podcast, which was great fun. So we obviously wanted to get you onto this show here. But as always, my co-host, Jennifer Amato, Dungeon Dan Ubell. Wait, what's he doing here? Oh, that's right. Richard <laughs> Ryan Rose and Angel Ramon couldn't be with us this week. Richard's uh, currently living in a camper as he goes through his move out to East Tennessee. And uh, Angel's got to go take care of some neighbors. So, you know, they're out doing their thing. So, Damon, get us up to date what we've been doing lately, man. I've been seeing you on the Facebook a lot here lately. Well, you know, I've been doing a lot of writing. I've been writing with other authors. I have a couple uh, couple new things in the works, some big things coming out this next year. And I got a new new book coming out of my own on uh, January 3rd that I wrote with uh, another author from Australia. Isn't that mm-hmm. great, the way things can get done in the today's day and age? Wow. Uh, no doubt. Yeah. And, you know, I've been working... Uh, doing a bunch of podcasts, trying to promote things, and uh, also, you know, been doing what I do on the the reels and the TikTok thing, speaking out about recovery and, uh, you know, uh, doing time in the uh, prison system and all that. So, so, uh, yeah, it's been a good good two years, man. Um, I'm really psyched. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, glad to have you on. So now, you know, the recovery thing, that's that's a really important deal there because – you know, a lot of times people forget, you know, okay, there's an author, but you don't really know everything about them. You don't know what their history was like, what they've gone through, how they got to where they are now. Um, how is things still going for you, man? Are you, you just still plugging right along one day at a time? I uh, Yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's generally the way you have to take it one day at a time. And uh, on Halloween, which Halloween actually has, happens to be my sobriety anniversary, oh. I just celebrated 10 years. Um, congratulations congratulations no doubt way to go man thanks yeah you know i mean i spent almost a decade addicted to opiates and heroin Mm. um and then i spent nearly a decade after that behind steel bars and uh you know because that's one of the few places that you end up when you choose that life and uh you know it got me on the right track though and it gave me time to focus on what was important Um, what I wanted to do with the remainder of the days that I may or may not have left. And, Mm -hmm. you know, being an author and being somebody who tries to put a little positive into this world is what I decided to be. And it's going really good. That's amazing. It is fantastic. It really is. Man, that's that's the kind of inspirational stuff I like to hear, you know, because you hear so many of the tragic stories that don't end well. So when you get one that's going this isn't just going good. This is going fantastic, man. I mean, look at you. You're, mm-hmm. you're a published author. You're out there, you know, in the public, meeting people, doing things. It's, man, it's so cool. Now, let me ask you, before all the bad stuff happened, were you into writing back then, or is this something that came along after the fact? I, I, I like, wrote my first story, like, before I could write script. Um, you know, what they used to teach script back in the day for any of the, you know, Gen Zers out there who, you know, it's curly cues. You all know what it is. I can tell you know. the occasional gray hair that I see. But um, so, yeah, like, so I started writing after the first <clears throat> Jaws movie came out before there was a Jaws 2. Mm-hmm. And I wrote a Jaws 2. And of course, what? you know, I was, oh, sweet. I was the main character, you know, because I could only think of like all the characters were my family members. So I put them in, and it was more of a screenplay um, rather than, you know, a novel with narrative and prose. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, 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 I did that. And, and uh, you know, I, I'm, I don't think it was – it's probably about as good as Jaws 2 was, actually, when it came out. <laughs> I liked Jaws 2. It it's was not after a, that. Yeah, after that it went down. Jaws yeah. 2 really wasn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, you know, getting uh, Roy Schneider out there hanging on, clang, clang, you know, come up and get a bite of this. <laughs> it wasn't It wasn't Jaws. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. nothing Nothing is Jaws, the first one. Nope. But, yeah, so that's when I started writing, you know, and then there was, like, a little drips and drabs that I did as a kid. 
And then when I, you know, got to high school and I picked up a guitar, I'm, the only thing I wrote were, you know, cheesy little three-minute tunes uh, designed that ditties to try to win the hearts of the ladies and uh, <laughs> <laughs> that preoccupied my writing for a good couple decades and uh <clears throat> and then you know it's like in prison um i i was in my first cell in the county jail and uh and i'm in there and, and i'm you know me in the bunk here like i'm telling stories all night long and you know and 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 now that i'm sobering yeah. up my stories are pretty involved and rich and i'm i'm because i'm feeling good and he's like you know I, I feel like you could write a book and i'm like ding 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 <laughs> man from there i was just you know i spent that uh the next next decade <coughs> writing and working on it and then finding out i had a long way to go so what was the first thing you wrote like when you had the ding 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 moment what was your first story yeah, so I had this image of a scene where this guy who's kind of narcissistic is standing there and he's standing next to a girl and she's in like a power suit and she's holding the briefcase and it's all this dialogue going in his head that, uh, you know, she wants me, you know, she's really into me. I can tell by the way she she's standing there not saying anything and then it breaks to the judge saying, uh, Mr. Da, da da do you have anything to say for yourself? And it turns out the guy who's standing there is the defendant and the girl standing next to him is the prosecutor. And <laughs> oh, she has wow. no idea. She's not into him <laughs> at all, you know. But uh, this is he's so narcissistic that he this is what is going on in his head. Okay, now that actually is a very funny story. I like that. That is. <laughs> Good it's very true. It's very true. Too. <laughs> so true, you know, because when we're in county jail and, and you know, God forbid, there's a girl CEO, you know, mm -hmm. of course she wants me, you know, right there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Got so, that plenty of times. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you on the outs, girl. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would. There, yeah. There was, there was one CEO in the county jail, um, and I used to mess with her hard, you know, like I, mm -hmm. I would hope. You know, she'd be like, all right, uh, how far can you run before I bean you in the head with this apple? You know, because yep. <laughs> um, I, I knew she, you know, I yeah. didn't entertain any thought that there was anything there. But I still like to be the clown. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, I'm, I'm off tomorrow. I'm off to uh, go to state prison and I'll be there about eight years. And she's like, oh, so we'll see you back in here in about eight years in a day. Right. You know? <laughs> oh. No, you won't. That's a burn. That was right there. not nice. Yep. Yeah, no. But, Don't uh, wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Damn straight. laughs> That's great. Yeah. I should, I should say something. Prior to going live, I had no idea about this stuff. I'm really sorry about that joke. <laughs> I feel bad. Now oh I know why Jack. Yeah, no, no, I know why cool. Jack told me on the padded room. It's like behave with this guy. <laughs> now oh, I get it. Nah, nah, don't behave because then I'm gonna feel like a. Yeah, don't handle me with kid gloves. I I've been in prison, man. Now it's that's nonstop dick jokes all day long. You know? Yeah. Oh let's, hell, the shirt's <laughs> coming off. Yo, oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I do not need to be handled. Uh, handled like a wilting violet that's for sure i know i get it by the way <laughs> i'm four months sober boy. from alcohol congratulations yeah that's fantastic it was tough at first it's not so bad now a couple occasions where alcohol came out and i'm like oh i gotta leave the room yeah that's a little early into the game to be around yeah. it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was tough yeah. but i left the room good for good you good for you that's that's excellent. Hell yeah. And, that and up until now, I never told anybody because they're all like, why is Dan leaving the room? Why is he always an asshole? Uh, <laughs> well, I could answer that because he is an asshole. I know you can, Jack. <laughs> I'm sure Jen's got some choice words, too. Not but many, but <laughs> not many, but it's not terrible. <laughs> all right. So I got another question. Um, OK, so out of all your books, what would be the best one for me to try first and i like paranormal and zombie i don't think i saw any zombie on your list but i saw a whole bunch of paranormal well i mean if you like zombie um and you know because every one of my books is a little different you know there's the, you go from like cozy horror to 
out and out blood and guts. But that's uh, what I like. Yeah. So I wrote a book called Hacked in Two. <clears throat> came out uh, last year, um, and James Carlson has a story in it, and I have a story in it, and my story is called Deacon, and Deacon. Uh. Deacon takes place in the post-apocalyptic zombie apocalypse. Oh, cool. Um, at least that's where it starts. So you have a scene where, uh, you know, there's these guys who are like marauders. You know, they're going around and they're stealing people's stuff and they're, they're killing people and they're tying up women and they're like brutalizing everybody. And they're, they're hillbillies. Like they are straight out of banjo country I was say, ding, 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 ding. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so like they've got a girl hostage in their complex and the scene opens up and this guy cedric is using a pitchfork to move body parts into a wheelbarrow hmm. well up to the gate comes deacon who's a where dresses like a priest uh he's grizzled he's thin he's gray-haired and he carries a spear <coughs> and uh he goes around as kind of you know saving the weak you know defender of the okay. uh the innocent but uh shortly after that scene it flashes to a office and there's two guys sitting in there and the one guy's flashing through the papers and reading it and he looks up and he goes I don't know, Damon, this isn't the kind of book you usually write. I'm usually, <laughs> you know, you wrote Abigail and you wrote piece by piece. And this is kind of weird. So it goes into actually the character Damon Manx as he's writing this story. Oh. So it goes into a metaphysical book and then it bounces between the zombie apocalypse and the struggle going on in the author's mind, who's as he's trying to write a story that isn't in his wheelhouse starts digging up his past and he's having problems with alcoholism uh divorce and recently being let out of prison wow so i'm getting that one today yeah it's it's a fun one i mean if you guys want i can read a little excerpt of that from it today you know? yes definitely do so. yeah are well, you guys down that. for that now or, yes you know i am Run it. You didn't got my so, got our appetites wet over here now. <laughs> all right. So uh Constance is locked in a cell and the Harlan brothers are the degenerates who have uh have done that to her and her friends. Um Bart Harlan, his MO is to take a chainsaw to his victims after he's done damn putting them through the ringer. Uh so this is um, a short excerpt uh, from Hacked Into Deacon. Uh, okay, I got something for you, little one, he said, maneuvering the key into the lock. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. The words lifted from the makeshift cell and met the monster where he stood at the door. Oh, you ain't praying now, are you? He popped the lock and swung the door wide. That ain't never helped no one know how. He looked down on the girl as she forced her back against the corner of the cage. A line of drool slipped from between Harlem's lips and dangled there for a few seconds. It swung like a pendulum before the band snapped and dropped to the floor. Now come on here, little one. Now, in the, the hour of our death, Constance made the sign of the cross on her forehead and closed her eyes. She prayed she would be able to block out the worst of it. Then the world erupted, and the roaring of the chainsaw's motor came to life, echoing off the concrete floor and steel walls. Constance princed her hands against her ears and thanked God for answering her prayers. The monster had decided to spare her the humiliation of his intrusion and chosen a far more merciful way she should spend her final moments, under the maw of his saw. She felt the warmth of the blood before she felt the teeth of the blades tear into her unassuming flesh. For days, she watched the others as they were taken from the cell and strapped to the table. Allison had been the first, then it had been David, then Jeffrey, and finally Claire. Each time the cage door opened, she was sure it would be her turn. But for some reason, they passed over her every time. 
They had left her to watch while they brutalized and slaughtered the rest of her group. It was impossible not to imagine what it would be like. Now she had her answer. She was alert enough to sense the hot blood jetting onto her face from the back spray of the saw's motor, but there was no pain. It soaked her clothes and plastered her hair to her face while the endless stream of piss-warm fluid tsunamied over her in a delirious deluge. Then the screaming started. Constance was so entranced by the sensation and the overpowering volume of the saw, she didn't know she had started to scream. Pressing her hands even harder against her ears and forcing her eyes shut, she suddenly realized in a moment of clarity it wasn't her voice doing the screaming. It was the voice of the monster standing in front of her. Constance opened her eyes in time to witness the tip of the chainsaw erupt from the barbarian's chest, grinding and ripping and gnashing with its teeth. The finely sharpened blade of the chainsaw chewed into the softest of the man's body tissue, liquefying all in its path. The pulp was projectile directly at Constance where she sat on the floor, covering her ears. Impossible to contain herself, a smirk raised her lips, allowing them to part just enough for the baptism of blood. It didn't bother her nearly as much as it should have, and while she enthusiastically, enthusiastically watched the magical gift of justice, an increasingly savage grin cheshired across her face. Though impossible to see from her vantage point, in the wash of grizzle and guts, someone had come up behind her captor and driven the beast's own weapon deep, in, deep into his back. The saw made quick work of the mastodon's musculature and bolted out of his chest like a three-day-old taco out of a dog's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pause there. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the giant man named Bart flailed and seized as the tree muncher ate into him. It like, looked like he had latched onto a high tension wire and about a million volts of direct current were racing through his feeble brain. All the while, a steady stream of chunky red cascaded from his open gullet and covered every surrounding surface. The giant oaf had enough awareness to, left to know what was happening to him and he attempted to latch on to the emerging blades with his bare hands. The digits of his massive mitts were immediately pulverized as the weapon chewed into them like tiny bits of kibble. For some reason, the sight of his own fingers disappearing into the ceaseless crimson tide still wasn't enough to give the Cretan pause. He slammed the stumps of his fingerless hands against the circulating blade, feeding the machine a fresh serving of warm meat. Finally, the head of the man's ulna, or possibly his radius, jammed against the mechanism, causing the saw to come to a halt. But Bart's body jerked a few times, then a massive bowl of innards sloshed from the gaping wound and splattered to the floor like an oversized basin of wet laundry. He twitched one last time and then crashed to the floor face first. This chainsaw protruded from his back, pointing towards the ceiling. And if you want awesome. to hear more, wow. I'll buy it. I'm, I'm, getting, it. I'm getting it right after the show. <laughs> yeah, wow. me too. Yeah. Whoa. You had me in a taco. The, yo, yeah. <laughs> it paints a glorious picture, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> and it was brilliantly placed. It was like everything is so dark. And then all of a sudden, ha ha. And then right back to dark. It was, that was so good, man. Oh, my God. Uh, that was yeah. amazing. Oh, thank and, it, you. and it had me thinking the whole time because I thought – how much do you think a chainsaw would really hurt considering it's moving so quick? Mm. And then you hit me with the taco part. <laughs> so that's now, my you, new thing. Did you research what a chainsaw would do to somebody? Uh, nah, I just kind of went with it. You know, um, I, I, I went with a gut feeling on that. Although if you look up chainsaws and see what they were invented for, that's even more horrifying than what a chainsaw Actually, well, we're... Can... chainsaws were invented to aid in childbirth. What? <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look it up. I'm not even going into it. What? Well, like, it I, like, like I said at the first of the show about he's been active on Facebook re recently. That's one of the things he had posted about. So that's oh. the only reason I even knew that because I clicked on it and then I wished I hadn't. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. It's. Mm. It, I, I'm not even. I. Discovery is the. Uh, 
ninety percent of the the prize. So I allow you to experience that on your own. Please do. Thank you. I totally see you, Mark. Yeah. yeah. Kid, you, get Mark. out of there, or else. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Definitely, I would say invented by a man, for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's like I got shit to do. I need to go golfing. Just <laughs> yeah, over insane. with. Insane. Wow. So now, wow. what are you currently working on? So, well, I mean, I, I've got a release that's coming out in a month. Um, so, you know, while while the book is written and it's it's for pre-sale already, uh, I could still consider myself working on that because, you know, it's, the process is not done until that book is out there and people are, you know, Got to get the eggs in the basket. People are not buying it. That's, you know, that's what it's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that, and I'm actually like, I'm honing, re going over. Uh, Manxiety is a collection of disturbing stories that's going to come out in April, which has 16 short stories and dark memoirs from my past that I have collected and put together that, uh, I'll be out at, with Barnes and Noble and on Amazon in April, end of April. Okay. Wow. Sweet. That'd be right after my birthday. <clears throat> oh, fantastic. Wink, wink. Uh-huh. I, I know what to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy. Send a book. I'm good. Everybody knows you're easy, Jack. Everyone. Yeah. So, you know, like I should mention in, <laughs> in, so I just read Deacon from Hackton to James Carlson who this um this book is actually out under James Carlson's uh his publishing company Gloomhouse okay. Publishing. Um James wrote a story in here called Red Falls um which is an awesome story. Well, do you want to give any of that? Do you know it well enough so you can find a good spot and Well, I'm not I don't want to read uh any of James stuff for him because you know I don't I, I feel that's the author's job to do. Okay. But I will plug you say plug this saying uh a couple goes to Pennsylvania to attend a wine festival. When they get there, they find out that the wine festival has not taken place for years. Mm-hmm. They show up in this one horse town where the owner of the hotel is the sheriff and the owner of the bar. And there's nothing but severe meat being served at the bar you cannot find anything in the line of a salad or a vegetable um and they decide well you know we're here anyway and we're gonna go for a walk in the woods and things just get more bizarre as uh there's something in the woods let's just say and this something in the woods has been protected by the town for a very very long time and uh if you see the picture there's a picture of a girl with something really creepy attached to her yeah so, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um james and i did that we james and i were on when i started out i got signed to a publishing company when my first book came out and i met james through that company and i i like i i immediately was drawn to him because i saw him as a guy you know he this guy could really write and he probably had a lot of advice that would help me so i i latched onto that because i was in need of advice and in in need of direction and he took me under his wing um shortly afterwards like that publishing company folded and james and i both left and went on our own and uh had been talking like yeah we need to write something that's a little different we both had stories that didn't really fit. Anywhere. Yeah, they didn't yeah, go together. Yeah, you know, that like, and we we just kept working that, and like, yeah, let's let's do Hackton too, and let's <clears> find <throat> a home for these. So, so yeah, you know, we did that, and uh, I, at some point, like, I, I I'm hoping that more people find out about Hackton too, and and appreciate for what it is, because there's this there's the people who like extreme very much and oh yeah that delivers on the extreme level but it also it does go into a metaphysical stage too and it also is bizarro on many levels so i feel like it has a little bit of all those genres for for somebody to latch on to and i think eventually it will get 
a little more props than it, it got upon release and, and its first year in publication. Well, I know y'all just sold two e copies today. I'm pretty certain of that. Cause Thanks oh, so yeah. much. This and then that one. Because, hey, I got to know more about that. And it's not about the extreme horror. I get my, yeah, yeah, I got my finger in the right place on the first try. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a Fester by Merrill David. It's a sci-fi coming-of-age splatterpunk. Nice. The infamous Chapter 10. That's all I got to say. Chapter oh, 10 boy. is the one that put the stamp on the damn thing. The other that's stuff's annoying. pretty hardcore, too, but Chapter 10 is, oh, boy. I love Sweet. a book that is described by a certain chapter. <laughs> that's, that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. And the cover alone is worth having just because that is such a sexy cover. Such a sexy cover. And that one that you were just showing, that thing is beautiful. And I and it didn't occur to me at first until you went kept going a little bit that I went, oh wait, hacked in two. Two stories, two authors, yep. hacked into and it's horror. So it man, that's brilliant. Which one of you two came up with that? I want to <coughs> say James probably came up with that. Okay. I'm pretty okay. sure he did, yeah. So we'll let him know I, I found that to be genius. Yes. That's, yeah, that's definitely smart in there. Two uh, e- fairly equally sized novellas in there. Um, I think the whole whole package uh, in paperback runs about uh, 180 pages. So you got a lot of reading in there. Now, do you, do you guys use like a, a common cover designer or you just kind of just throw it out there? Here's the cover I need. I want to look something like this. And then you just get submissions. How do y'all go about getting these things? Um, You know, you, you, you find a couple of people who you like or, or trial and error. So um, James used uh, Luke Spooner for this. And Luke uh, Luke does really nice work. That is very cool. I love the, the googly eyed thing there. That's yeah. wicked. It's that a creepy little, looking monster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coming up behind Deacon right there. And you see yep. him with his uh and Deacon little, looks cool as hell. Deacon is scary as fuck. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, he he's a badass. And you know, you'll find I'm not even gonna tell you. Um yeah, I'd love to it. hear your uh your thoughts on on it when you get done and let me know. Here's another <clears> scene <throat> picture oh, from neat. inside. How do I this, oh, yeah, yeah, you were uh, go go yeah. go back the other way, go back the other way. Other way, there you go. Yeah, now we can see it. That's hard. That that's hardcore okay, so right there's there. Deacon standing over a bunch of bodies. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what we love around here on the Written Undead podcast, man. Yeah, cool. yeah. So, um, and then here's a picture from Red Falls. Um, Ooh, uh, that's calm, pretty cool. I'll say, calm yourself that down. Is really don't, awesome. don't get excited. You know, you got the heart thing. Hey, back up, dude. I'm about to have a release. <laughs> <laughs> Jen doesn't laugh. She's asleep. I yeah. hate you guys anymore. <laughs> she's become she's become dumb. I'm, dumb. I I have become uh, love um what is it? Comfortably numb. Comfortably <laughs> That's numb. What it is. <laughs> Yeah, if you ever uh, get involved in any of our private chats that are me, Jeff, oh, good Lord. Dan, Jen, and D, you would actually wonder if we were sane and should even be allowed out in public. I don't know what you're some talking things, about. Yeah, They're some informative. Of the that, uh, informative? Some of yeah. the things that get said are a little questionable. <laughs> Jack. Jack. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jen. No, no. Yeah, oh, Jeff. I'm a good Yeah, girl. Jeff. Yeah, he's Jeff. Not here. We can blame him. Yeah, yeah, he's totally not here. So it's all <laughs> Jeff, all day, all the time. Yeah. I'm the I'm the moderator. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and D is the unfortunate victim <clears throat> of reading said text. I've recently so, yeah, found a, a new um well, no, not new, but new to me. I got uh somebody who's done my last two upcoming uh um covers and uh Greg Chapman from uh, Australia uh, just did this one. This is coming out in... That's another cool one. Yeah, this That's one's crazy. coming out in January. I wrote this so, with Mar- Mark Tows, um, Our Cranium, it's called, and this one comes out in January. Cover designed by Mark Chapman. Nice. I like the cover. I'm with you, yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I hate to say it, a cover really 
can help you choose the book. It really does. Yep. And they and they always say don't judge a book by its cover, <clears> but I'm sorry, I'm hanging them on the wall. Because yeah. How do you not? Things, you know? Except the uh, Necromon Well, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, 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 yeah. no. Leave <laughs> well, that one alone. Well, I think Lynn Hansen, you know, she said the cover is going to make you pick up the book and turn it over and read the blurb. And if the blurb yep. is something that's going to catch you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, before I dig deeper into that specific <clears throat> book right there, I hear from a lot of authors that the blurb is the hardest damn part. Like writing the book's fine. That's easy. It's the damn blurb that gets you. Is that true? Is that, does that get you too? Yes. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I had what, like 80,000 words of anxiety, and I know what it's about, you know, and I know what all the short stories are about. And I'm like, I'm ready to submit this book for presale if I can only write the blurb on the back. So I write all, all of this that that's a mess that needs it's got typos and it's and it, and so I'm like, you know what? Enough. I gave it to Mike Ennenbach, who uh, Mike is a poet. He's, he's a writer. He's so eloquent with words. Um, and he just came out with a book called Dream Whispers. And it, like, I don't like poetry generally, but I like Mike's poetry. This guy is deep and this guy hits home. And he wrote me like the perfect blurb. And I'm like, that's it. All right. Enough said. I'm done. Let's just <laughs> put that on the back of the book. Wow. I, I, it's out of my hands, you know, because I'm yeah, I come lost. Hey, well, I guess uh, now jumping back to that specific book, um, you got a passage of yours you would mind dropping on us on uh, our cranium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, why don't I, uh, you know, since we're at that point of we've lo we've looked at the cover. Yes, we, we have. Say, OK, so there's a guy strapped into a headset sitting behind a uh, keyboard and there's blood all over the place and uh, let's read the blurb. So that's a typical Thursday at Dan's house. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. All right. So here's the blurb. Four horror writers, four vulnerable eagle, egos. When all art is subjective, how does the group decide who is the scariest? Welcome to our cranium a powerful technology that fuses with the author's mind to stimulate their best possible creation, immersing other participants in the narrative. It's all to play for with so much pride at stake. So strap your headset on and come along for the ride. Just be warned, things might get a little bumpy once the gloves come off. The future of literature is about to get an upgrade. The future is our cranium. Wow, that is pretty damn good. That is a mm -hmm. damn good blurb. Yeah, and I wish I had a, a damn thing to do with that. <laughs> Mark Dows, <laughs> my co-author, wrote like every damn every word that's good in that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got hey, a credit for writing done. a blurb for a book. Did you? Really? I didn't know if I don't know if Jack and Jen know. You guys oh. know Alina? I don't remember her last name. Romania? No. Oh, no. um. Oh, good. Then you guys aren't going to crucify me. I, I was beta reading for her on a book, first book it. that she got published. And in one drunken night, I made a comment to her over Messenger. And then I get a call from no other, nobody other than a fucking <sighs> zombie road guy. Oh, uh, David Simpson. David oh, Simpson. Elena Gucci. Gu yep. Gucci. Yeah, I can't say her name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I get a call from him saying, hey, Alina wants to use this comment as her blurb. I'm like, okay, what is it? And he goes, well, she said that you said this, and she loves it. I'm like, what did I say? <laughs> it's like the road only with lesbians. No, Good Lord. Oh, this is what alcohol <laughs> does to you. She loved it. So, yeah, I have a blurb credit. Nice. nice. Congratulations. Absolutely. I, I was drunk. What did I know? <laughs> Apparently more than you do sober. I don't know. Apparently. What was, what was her name? <clears throat> Al Alina, Alina Giucci. Gu I think maybe it's Giucci. But she does a lot of stuff for David Simpson. And I think she does stuff for Scott um, and a few others. She does a little promo stuff for them. Make sure their stuff keeps getting popped on mm -hmm. different websites and such. You know, so. Yeah, she's kind of promoter. If I can find her, yeah, she went. She went from promoter to author. 
Yeah. Well, and she, and she, she writes reverse harem now, and mm. I think it's under a pseudonym name. And she uh, does a lot of pictures too. She'll take like pictures in cemeteries <clears throat> and things like that. You know, she's kind of mm-hmm. goth looking. You'll know her when you see her. Yeah. But that first her. book is under her name. And I, I can't remember the name of it. I got it over here somewhere. We'll talk. Yep. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk. figure it out. We'll figure we'll it out talk. later. Yeah. Got to doing a show right now. Got to guess. Got to talk. Hey, I had to promote <laughs> something <laughs> other than my insanity. All right. So now, Damon. <laughs> Is there anything as far as genre that you haven't written that for whatever reason is nagging at you that you want to one day? Just maybe you're not ready yet, but it's there and you just want to give it a try. Yeah, you know what? I I mean, I always toy with you toy with the idea of stepping out of genre and writing something else like um and and I, you know, I'm not fully sold on the idea. Like I, sometimes I say, oh yeah, you know, the romance is really selling or these cozy mysteries are really selling. Maybe I should try to do that. And, and when I get to the point of actually thinking that I'm going to do that, it's just like, well, that's not what I want to do. Um, what I do want to do is, and this may, well, this will come to fruition, but the story that, um, will come out so you know i mean for you and all your you guys know (laughs) probably a couple of listeners know but eventually everyone will know that you know my life prior to um writing was addiction and incarceration and that's nearly two decades of my life Mm -hmm. um going through heroin addiction and then uh going into prison um so you know, I'm a guy who had it all prior to that. Like before that, I had a, you know, I was a drywaller. I, I had a good business. I had a wife, um, built a house down in Florida and we did, uh, really, really well prior to that, but there was like always something missing in me, you know? So then I, I started one, my head got into not being satisfied. So I started using, uh, opiates and that went from there. So I'm a guy who had it all, lost it all, and then fought to get it back a little at a time. While I was in the prison system, I met several different men who helped mentor me on a path towards sobriety, um, getting my spiritual life in order, my Mm -hmm. educational life in order. Uh, One of those men who actually did that um, was a a hitman for the mob. Um, Wow. Yeah. And... uh, <clears throat> he had actually, you know, found he, he'd been in for 33 years by the time I met him. And he had had a whole coming to Jesus, you know, like he had dedicated his prison bid to helping guys who were just coming in to making sure that they don't, you know, keep repeating what they were doing and offering them different ways that they might change their lives. You know, so his redemption was found in helping others. And ultimately, um, Marco was also able to give back some time. And he actually got out, too, on a 30 to life sentence. Wow. wow. So, Good for him. yeah, so he got out. Um, and there's a story in there because now Marco is also dedicated to uh, not so much prison reform, but gang life reform um you know like while he was in there he got guys to drop his flat drop their flags you know mm-hmm. he got he got bloods to be like that's it i'm done you know walking away in the prison system you know and their brothers are like and that's like an impossible thing right there you know the only that's you, powerful you come yeah. in live the only way out is dead you know i mean like I I think in the day it was i don't know if it's as back in the much. day i don't think it's that way anymore yeah, exactly. I still remember the right. I still remember the eighties, and it was not. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah. That that was a whole different time frame, a very very volatile time in in the gang life, <laughs> and that was very. Back then, it was right. blood in, blood out. Blood in, it. blood out. <laughs> that was yep. it. You know, nowadays though, especially in the prison system, I've seen it where, you know, ABs aren't ABs anymore. They're they're really just it's just a it's just a title it's just a name 
it's just a protection. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, which, you know, I'm fortunate, you know, like, because when I got sentenced, I got sent to it's a northern state prison in Newark, New Jersey, which mm-hmm. at the time it was like this is the gang prison in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. That's it was a blood prison. Mm-hmm. Um, when I got there, you know, I got sent to the old head block. So I'm around like guys who'd been there for 30 years, you know, 20 years, all guys who have bodies, you know. Um, and generally, those aren't the guys who are going to mess with you. Nope. You know, they're more of the thorough dudes. You know, they're. They've done their mistake or whatever. Usually it's, you know, it's a manslaughter that was, you know, crime of passion or, you know, somebody made a mistake and it happened. And these guys just want to live their lives. Yeah. But I want to write that story because, uh, you know, now that I'm out, Marco and I are still very close. Um, We're working on our own podcast, which is going to be about uh, what I just talked about. Oh, that's Um, sweet. Yeah, nice. you know, you'll have to let us know for real. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. You know, and we've got a lot of guys who have been through the system and now are actually working in education to bring education into the prison system, helping guys to not go down that path or also helping guys who are just getting out who don't know how to navigate society because they've been away for so long. They're institutionalized. It's completely yeah it's not something that's easy to get over it's not like you just walk out and you're like ha ah, freedom i know what to do that you get used yeah, to the that structure yeah everything i mean you got to think mm-hmm. these guys didn't have cell phones they never saw a cell phone when uh, when they went in now there are cell phones that computers that are in your hand they probably went in when it what was a what was it a candy, nokia candy computer <laughs> you know when it was <laughs> we're yeah. talking like what the commodore 64 <clears throat> one of the first computers that's probably what it was when they went in and now we have computers in the palm of our hands so everything has changed and it has changed drastically and quick and it's a shock to their system so of course they it's like that guy in Sha- what was his name uh brooks and shawshank brooks, yeah right yeah, about to bring that he, up yes when he hung himself because he could not handle it you know, there's a lot. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. All right. I'm going to read Jeff's uh, comment <laughs> yeah. here real quick. Sometimes you need to distance yourself distance from uh, from a thing before you can write about it. I was out of the Coast Guard for a full decade before I was able to write about it. Mm-hmm. Of course, I then added zombies. <laughs> but the idea is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that, well. You know, if The Walking Dead didn't take the whole prison thing. Um, while while I was in prison, I, I every scenario I had was like, well, I mean, you know, if the zombie apocalypse breaks out, we're we're good to go. I mean, <laughs> you we think, can't, unless we you're can't locked get in your out, cell. you know, unless you're locked in your cell. But we we had plans in place for that. So. Really? Okay. Yeah. Now you've got, you've they got could get out of there. Yeah, we had care. plans. In There's place. always a we way. We weren't out. staying in those. All right. No. You got to at least give us an example of one of these plans. Give us a, a, a make believe conversation you had with the gang about how we're gonna get the hell out of a zombie. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. So we d- it was not steel bars. It was electronic doors. Okay? okay. So the electronic doors have an electronic. Yeah. On the outside, there's the track and the chain and on the bottom on the right hand side where they're connected to the wall they're connected at the base in the concrete um in the old concrete this is where they're connected so we have three by two steel foot lockers in our cells Mm -hmm. um if my bunkie and I got on either side of that footlocker and swung that as hard as we could into the base of that door, I am going to guarantee that would pop that out in the bottom and enough for us to get out. You and paying usually, attention to this, Dan? Yep. Usually it does work that notes. way. We had electric doors, and, and if all you got to do is kick it. You got to just donkey kick it really hard. And you can definitely, definitely pop them doors open. 
Oh, and if there's a rash of prison outbreaks <laughs> after this show today, not our fault. No, <laughs> it is not you know what? Well, this is I'm, no knowledge. It's okay. I'm still on parole, so. Like, <laughs> 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 I'm glad yeah. there's an officer in the chat that I yeah. heard with them. <laughs> exactly. he, he was only for speaking he, like this is for a me- book. Yes, yes, metaphorically. And, well, now I'll tell you a book I would maybe not now, maybe not now, but a book I would really like to uh, read one day is the book about you, specifically you from childbirth, the parents, the life, the everything. Because I mean, dude, you have had a fascinating life. You really, really have. You know what? It's um, it actually started out just that way too. So on uh, January fifteenth, nineteen sixty-seven, my mother and father are sitting on the couch, and the first Super Bowl comes on, and they're watching. And my dad's excited because Green Bay is playing the Kansas, playing Kansas City. And he loves Green Bay. Go and this go. is exciting. The very first Super Bowl. And my mom turns to him as soon as it's kickoff. And she goes, Bob, it's time. What? Like, what, do you, what do you mean it's time? He's like, the baby's ready. It, the baby's what? Coming. Oh. He's like, no. You so he interrupted the first Super Bowl? <laughs> he No. He says, can you hold it till halftime? <laughs> Let so me my, cross my legs. <laughs> my mom sat on the couch till halftime, waited, <laughs> and at halftime, he hopped her into the car, drove her to the hospital, dropped her off, and ran <laughs> back home and came finished watching the game. <laughs> and uh, the very first Super Bowl is when I well, I was born the next day because it took a little while after oh, all yeah. that excitement. But, but still. The very first Super Bowl is when I, I made my first appearance. So, you know, it's it's not always where you end up. Sometimes it's how you start started off, too. And uh, <laughs> this, started this, by interrupting the biggest event on TV. Right. The first one. The first ever. The very this, first one. This is, this is why you have got to write your story at some point, because you've already got your beginning. That's going to have everyone hooked from the right off the start. Like he interrupted the first Super Bowl. What is wrong with this guy? He couldn't have hung around like another day or two. What's he doing? <clears throat> I mean, wow, man, that is so cool. I, um, and you so, got your blurb. I <laughs> fucked up the first Super Bowl. I, yeah, I, from the <laughs> from the very first Super Bowl to being in a, an accident with Ronald Reagan's motorcade. Um, oh my what? goodness! Yeah, so uh, we got to we got to space this stuff out, or we're just gonna like you know we're gonna wow. kill, kill wow. the audience here. But let, let's just go back. So, yeah, um, a lot of these little darker memoirs are uh, coming out in my uh, collection called Manxiety in April, um, where I have some short, some of my short memoirs um, thrown in there, which read a little more like creative nonfiction. Um, also, you know, the Godless platform. I, I'm the first guy to do this on Godless, and, and I've released something... Um, called The Hell by Damon Max, which is it's a, a short encapsulated story of my addiction and getting thrown into the prison system. Um, and, you know, each time it's the first book was like 3,500 words as a short story and part two, which um, captures a lot of my uh, the crime that actually got me into prison and then me being sent to the central reception um, facility where they held me and tried to figure out which prison I was actually going to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that story. If, if readership likes it, there'll be a third part. But uh, this is kind of like my preamble to figuring out how to write my memoir well man i hope i hope you're able to finally get to the point you do because i'm telling you there's people out there that would read it and it would change their lives i have no doubt yeah you know i hopefully at 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 the end of the book or you know throughout it that it will bring a a message of hope and a message of you know if 
this fucker can do it. You guys can do it too, you know. Because if I could get clean, <laughs> just anybody could get clean. I, I, I don't care. Like I was that hopeless addict, you know, and and I didn't even care. Like I just wanted to use heroin till it was over, and I was praying that it would be over, and like I couldn't even end it. Like I was that. That's how miserable I was. Like I just I. I couldn't go another day without using and I couldn't go another day with using and by the glory of whatever it is that you believe in fate interceded and threw me into the county jail and it removed me from my drug of choice and it gave me some waking sobriety. Sometimes that's what you need. Yep. I I'm uh so I'm dope sick in the county jail. Oh, that's I, fun. You. So here, hey, here's a little thing for your <laughs> listeners. Don't, um, don't do this when you go to the county jail, which I hope you never do. And no matter how bad you're feeling, no down on yourself you are, they're gonna bring you to the nurse, and the nurse is gonna ask you a question: Do you want to hurt yourself or somebody else? Don't say yes. <clears throat> I said, you get yes. put in a green suit. You a get stripped suit. naked. You get put in a turtle suit. It will. It's not warm. It's cold. You get a blanket that cannot tear. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to do to yourself in a jail. <laughs> Write you, that down, Dan. If you were lying and you didn't want to hurt yourself, you will want to after that. <laughs> I made this mistake. Yeah. Going into the county jail, and I was you like, have. Well, an yeah. Officer. What do you think? I sure as hell yep. do. Well, you have ding, an ding, officer ding. sitting there watching you the whole time. Yeah. So that added misery to it, and then I get to see the like a mm-hmm. day later. You know, I'm really going through withdrawals, and and the nurse comes by, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, uh, I'm I'm really going through detox bad. Do you have something that'll help me with the symptoms? It's a male nurse, and he looks at me. He goes, honey, he goes, we like to bring you down like a spaceship. Hard, hot, and fast. <laughs> I'm like, That's you mother. <laughs> they didn't even give you Pepto? I got nothing. Oh, I wrong. got nothing. I got to enjoy every ounce of my misery, which might have oh. been the best thing that ever happened to me. And it might have been, because then you're like, oh, okay, I'll see why I'm never doing this again. Yeah. <laughs> The well, I have to. The ones. Yes, exactly. I have to take off early. I'm so sorry, but it was good no to problem. see you, Damon. I'll see you guys later. Bye, I gotta Jen. Run. Bye. Later, Jen. Bye. Bye. It was good to see you, Damon. And there goes Jen Amato, everybody. And if you're wondering, because I always do at the end of the show, you can find her on Amazon. She's got a new book out. Jana, part of the group series. Go get it. It's awesome. Definitely a good book. I see so, that. I got to pick that one up. It looks like now, well, a zombie apocalypse book, right? It, it is. It is. It, it is. It is. And she's tying it together where each book in her series is going to focus individually on a specific character in the group. Oh, so, cool. So, yeah. And then they're going to tie all together, you know, towards the end and, you know, bring the bunch together. Who survives? Who don't? Good stuff. You know, it's, yeah. it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, now, Damon, uh, we're down to the last few minutes of the show and whatnot, man. Hype what you need to hype, man. Get it out there because there's people going to be watching this. Let's. What, what do you want to get out there for everybody to go consume and soak up and, you know? Hey, so, uh, so check it out. So this January 2nd, Mark Towes and I have our cranium coming out. You can pre-order this now on Amazon. Um, I, I hope that you do. This book is, it's a good one. It's about 150 pages. Uh, This is what happens in the not-so-distant future when four horror authors, all from different genres, battle to see who is the scariest. But how do you do that? Well, there's new technology, and it's called our cranium. Let's the author tap into the uh, artificial intelligence, and the computer helps bring out their scariest story. But, it also lets other people come along for the ride and play the characters in the book. Ooh. But you got to know the safe word because 
if you get hurt in Arc Granium, you get hurt in the real world. Oh, so uh, I like the way that sounds. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's Arc Granium. That's coming out January second. Mark Tows from Australia, and I wrote that together, and I, I'm really proud of this one. Um, I hope people check it out. It's it's really it's something else, and uh, with all that's going on with artificial intelligence in the world, I mean, it's, I don't know, you know, what, AI what? Is scary. If, yeah. If, if this thing hits hard, you know, hard enough for you guys to go screw it. We're, we're going audible. Will y'all be planning on getting like four individual narrators. Like he'd have an Australian narrator. You'd have your narrator through it all. I mean, cause mm. I'm all about some audible now. I love me some audible. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, that's a, that's a good thing. So there's four authors in the book. And of course, you know, the, the narrator or whatever. So you have two female, you have a, a older uh, sci-fi horror author in there. You have a young um, kid who's uh, an extreme splatter author. You have a, a, an older woman who writes um, twilighty gothic horror. And then you have a young um, Asian girl who writes uh ethereal asian style horror like the ring and all that stuff yeah so you've got these three totally different voices and they each have a chance to bring each other into their own individual stories so that would be pretty cool having you know somebody each uh different narrate different voices for each um it's certainly on the table for what what we might do when a listener i love that um I was I've, I'm finishing up on uh, Adrian's Undead Diary, Ghosts, and that's what they did when they got to Locky. It was the girl that does the Locky, and then it was the narrator that Chris always uses. Is it Chris? You know, yeah, yeah. Chris says um, yeah. he he had to switch narrators, you know, kind of midstream. Which <clears throat> yeah, I like the original narrator better, but anyway, that's an argument we can't win. Um, <laughs> But you did notice they switched the narrator things at one point. So, like, she got to do um, air. What's her name? Ah, Dag Nabbit. We were just talking just about her too. Me. But she gets to do the first introduction, meeting Adrian, which meant she got to do the voice of Adrian. And then they switch and they go to Adrian's actual narrator, and then he starts doing the voice of Lockie. Would you guys be doing something like that, or do you think you would try to actually go? have them all communicating at the same time and reading the lines together. Mm. Yeah. So my only experience with, um, with an audio book is my first one. And because it was a shorter one, you know, I went through ACX audible and went through the process of, uh, auditioning guys now, because that book had, you know, there's a couple gay characters in there. There's a baby, um, and, you know, there's only a few characters, really. I just wanted one person to be able to do it all. And they had to be able to do, like, the one One of the guys is a very flamboyant character. The other one is, you know, he, he shouldn't be flamboyant. He should be very um, butch, mild-mannered. If they, yeah, there's a butch character. And then there's, <clears throat> there's a doctor in there who's very professional. And, of course, the baby. So my only experience with that is... Um, auditioning somebody to do the role of everything, including narrator um, and all that. And I think, you know, at this point for us as authors and publishing ourselves, it would come down to the finances. Can we afford to have all those people being characters in our book where, you know, going with the one would probably be the cost effective way to go. Yeah, and see, and that's what Chris had brought up was it like to try to pay to have them be able to do these recordings a specific way to where this one spoke, that one spoke. Now we got to link it all together. We got to make it all sound right, and that that would kind of not necessarily be cost effective. But man, that would be a dream for most big fans like us. Mm. Well, before we bail, next time I'm on a show with you, uh, Damon, would love to hear your take on the marketing of your books you know, what it takes to get it out there to everybody. Um, I'd like to hear some of that stuff. Well, hey, how about this? Um, <clears throat> when you get ready to do your, ne- your your actual release coming up, why don't we just schedule a show and just do a damn show, and me and Dan can be there 
regardless, and we can see who else wants to come on, you know, to fire questions at you and give you shit and yeah, and promote have a the good new time release and, and do the new release. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know, fact, I don't um, know how how far in the future you want to go, but I, I'm I'm working with a, a team on the release of Maxiety in April, and definitely we're, want to do we're that. We're going to have a party for that, so we're going to have a whole online party, big release party that night with a lot of uh, Q and A and some giveaways and stuff. But you know, if you're interested in doing something, I know you guys stay booked up, but uh, you know. I'm, yeah, but well, we I'm make always... exceptions. We we fit. We'll, we'll do an extra show. Like we was like, ah, right, yeah, we'll do this one. Like I'll give an example. Uh, yeah, I can't get it out of there without knocking everything off the shelf. A couple of things off the shelf. Um, J.S. Patrick just had a release party uh, in his hometown of uh, Provincetown, Illinois, and he asked me to MC his book signing and his book release. And so what they did, they got a uh, a projector that had the digital, you know, thing going on. And they had our images up on the screen, just like this. What we're looking at had us up there, and I just, uh, you know, did did the thing, and we we did it that way. We could do something like that, like where you could have us all up on the on on a wall, so everybody could see us and hear us, and we just do a big party out of it. Uh, hey, you know, if you want to put something together, I know we're like we're on major different time zones, but if we could do something like later in the evening, like around six or seven <laughs> yeah. or so. That would work out well, and we could get Mark to join in from Australia, and we could uh, that would you know, be good. have a, a whole yes. uh, our cranium release party if you're absolutely. If you're hey, that. we could totally bring Jeff in. Yeah, and great. Jeff slaughter in coming out one. about the same time. Yeah, let's we'll make a big party out of it. Let's have a yeah, big, no, that'd be a lot of fun. Big man. blowout. I, I won't be uh, drinking though. <laughs> well, well, no, no. I'll, oh wow! I'll, so Jeff's who's coming out the January third. Yeah, let's do a tag team. That would be awesome. So there you go. It's yeah. official. Everybody in right. Written Undead, you already know there's going to be a big party coming up down the road. That would well, be fantastic. Thank you, Damon, for hanging out with us again. Man, you have thank become you. one of my favorite people in the whole wide world uh, at a very rapid rate. And that's not easy to do with me. It's taken Dan like months <laughs> for me to trust him. Oh, uh, man. Thank you so <laughs> much. I love you guys. Appreciate well, it. Like, I, like I normally do for every show, but since Richard... Angel, Jen, and Jeff aren't here. I will say for the four of them, you can find them on Amazon, some of them on Goodreads. You can find them all over the place. Audible, especially for Richard, especially for Jeff. Man, go out there and get this stuff. Guardians of the Apocalypse. Scream bloody cheerleader if you need a good laugh, because you will get a good laugh out of that one. Yeah. Wild-eyed Southern Boys. The Great Centurion. King Minos, which I've been helping in the editing process for that, and I am so honored <laughs> for that. That makes me so happy. So awesome. Dungeon Dan's about to start writing. Damon, break it down, baby. Where can everybody find you? Hey, so, you know, you can got, always find me, find my books at Amazon. Um, you can also come check me out on my own website, which is www.damonmanx.com. That's D-A-E-M-O-N-M-A-N-X.com. Also, check me out at my publishing company, which is Last Waltz Publishing www.lastwaltzpublishing.com I'm on Facebook, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, although I'm probably not there for long, but <laughs> you know, we'll, uh, we'll ride that storm out as long until the brakes fall off. And, I don't <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, you know, and then I'll be back here, you know, I'll look us for the release party. We'll be tag teaming that. Well, hey, fun. you Hey, I'm I'm just gonna plug it because it's live anyway. Uh, tell Heather she's more than welcome to come on and pitch. You know, stories her grandmother told her and all of her other writings. If she ever wants to come on the show, I just don't want to bug her. I've seen some of her posts about being bothered, and I ain't trying to bother her. So I'll send you as a minion to go do that for me. Yeah, you know, and I'll see. You know, um, <clears throat> I guess we'll all be talking about a day in mind, and uh, I'll invite yep. her to come along. And you know, from there you can. Uh, I'll make the introductions and we'll see what happens. Fantastic. All Perfect. right. Well, for Richard Ryan Rose, who ain't here, Andrew Ramon, who ain't here, Jennifer, who left, <laughs> Dungeon Dan Amato, Jack Children, Dungeon Dan Amato, Dungeon, I, I, <laughs> Freudian slip. I, I was mixing you guys. You, Bell. That's you, Bell. He's not related. Trust me. He doesn't want to be anyway. And the one and only Damon Manx. This has been the Written Undead Podcast. 
We'll see y'all next week. Peace out. Bye.